David Walliams is a celebrity who's been a part of the public eye for so long that he's become a legend of sorts in his own right. In fact, the man has dabbled in quite literally everything the entertainment industry has to offer. Though his time in the limelight has not always been magnificent or even beloved, it cannot be denied that David Walliams has carved a meaningful space for himself on the big table. As a result of this, he's able to live his life in a certain way, one that allows him to meet his own lifestyle standards. So, let's take a look at how he got to where he is now and how he spends his massive fortune acquired over the years. Born in Wimbledon to Peter and Kathleen Williams, David grew up as normally as possible in Banstead, Surrey. He studied at Collingwood Boys' School and later graduated from the University of Bristol with a Bachelor's of Arts in Drama. It was here that he started performing in National Youth Theatre, where he met his lifelong friend and comedy partner Matt Lucas. The two went to collaborate throughout the rest of their lives in moderately successful shows together. The pair is perhaps best known for Little Britain, a show that inspired as many controversies as it did laughs. Interestingly, David was not born with the surname Walliams. He decided to change his stage name after he joined College Equity, where there was already a David Williams. The rest, we could say, is history. He's performed in many television shows over the course of his career, most notably in Doctor Who, Phantasmagoria, and Big School, the latter being a show he co-wrote. Then, for a decade, he was a judge on Britain's Got Talent. By this point, the actor and comedian had solidified himself as a man of substance, and on the reality show, he got the opportunity to build a bigger fanbase. Now that we know how that story ended, it does leave a bitter taste in the mouth, with all the lawyers and leaked audio clips involved. In 2022, David decided to bow out of the Got Talent franchise, choosing to, as he claimed, leave the show on a high. Of course, we can't talk about David Walliams without his writing career. Beginning in 2008 and a contract with HarperCollins, David started writing children's books. This is something David is still doing now, and in July of 2023, he released a short story collection titled The World's Worst Monsters. On the personal end of things, David was married to model and girlfriend Lara Stone from 2010 to 2016, and the pair share a 10-year-old son, Alfred. He proposed to her with an engagement ring worth £100,000 and hid it in a cheeseburger. They married in May 2010 in an £80,000 ceremony at Posh Claridge's Hotel in London, where the guest list included many A-list celebs and their closest friends and family. Speaking of which, let's talk money. Unlike many, David Williams has access to the kind of fortune that lets him purchase full-blown mansions. That's right, he purchased the very well-known Supernova Heights in London for £3.25 million back in 2005. What's interesting about this property, and also perhaps one of the reasons David chose it as his primary home at one of the most important moments of his life, might be its star-studded legacy. Long before David Walliams managed to put in an offer for the Belsize Park Mansion, another celebrity had notoriously lived in the house. Noel Gallagher, everyone's favorite Oasis star at the peak of his career, was living at Supernova Heights, and if tabloids are to be believed, through many wild parties in the very residence. David, after acquiring ownership of the house, turned it into more of a family home. For over a decade, he lived in the house with his then-wife, Lara Stone, and their son, Alfred. With the renovations funded by the comedian and their time spent in the house as a family, the property was completely transformed. David transformed the place into an exceptional architectural masterpiece with high ceilings and newly installed skylights. The exterior of the house is as Victorian as they come, but the interior has been wholly modified. All five floors of it, the 70-feet garden space and luxurious roof terrace also make the property stand out in its local neighborhood. Unfortunately, David decided to bid farewell to the home he poured so much of himself into back in 2019. He listed it on the market through Marcus Parfit, who released images of the beautiful beautifully furnished residence at a starting price of 5.3 million euros. While we're sure the loss was monumental for David, it was evident that he was itching to move on and start anew, and he did so by moving to another London property in 2019. The Britain's Got Talent judge now lives in a private property that he only occasionally shares snippets of on his social media, but he does do it often enough that his audience has managed to get a good peek into the comedian's private space multiple times now. 
To start off, he lives with his two dogs, named after beloved fictional characters Bert and Ernie, and shares pictures of them in various locations inside his house on his Instagram account. From the looks of it, the BGT judge has luxurious white walls, with occasional black and white photographic prints on display, a log-burning fireplace, and a luxurious marble top kitchen. Being as wealthy as he is, it makes perfect sense for David Walliams to have a home away from home, and that's where his East Sussex property comes into play. Perhaps it's to escape all the controversies he's frequently involved in. Or perhaps he just likes having quiet time away from the spotlight, but David's beachfront property in Hove's Millionaire's Row Strip is aptly named. Thanks to David's incessant Instagram posting habits, we do have a few pictures of the beautiful house. It seems like David visits the property when he's desperate for time away from the bustling city of London. But unfortunately for him, it was reported by the Daily Mail that the seaside residence is under serious threat of destruction due to coastal erosion in the near future. According to sources, it might not even exist by 2040. But there are some projects set up to help save the homes, which might end up costing David another $35 million. While the exact price of the house is unknown, we can take a healthy guess as to just how much a property like that could cost. While David Williams hasn't shown any particular interest in hoarding a car collection, unlike many of his peers in the same wealth bracket, it does not mean he has no enthusiasm for them. In fact, it seems like he uses up all his enthusiasm and excitement for cars and pours it into the Aston Martin DB6. He's absolutely obsessed with the car, and some of that adoration might just be a result of his debilitating obsession with the James Bond franchise. He himself was a proud owner of the Aston Martin DB6 back in the early 2000s and would not let a single opportunity to drive the vehicle pass him by. At a Bond auction event, while picking out his favorite pieces, he spoke about the Aston Martin DB10 and called the signed piece by Daniel Craig a beautiful machine that will rightly sell for millions. At another red carpet event, David can be seen posing with the Aston Martin on display, and he's also left no opportunity to pose with the car in a tux on his social media accounts. David Williams has an affinity of coming across as somewhat relatable, which is why it's often easy to forget that he amasses a net worth of 25 million euros. But occasionally, through his lifestyle and vacation decisions, we're humbly reminded of the tax bracket he exists in. For his 52nd birthday last year, he was surrounded by his friends and family, many of them A-list celebrities, at the posh restaurant The River Cafe in West London. He had ex-co-stars Amanda Holden, Alicia Dixon, and Ant McPartlin on the guest list, along with his old friend David Schwimmer. He also invited Sir Michael Caine to the celebration, who partied with other guests like Robbie Williams, Aaron Taylor-Johnson, and Jamie Redknapp. Among the guests was also Natalie Imbruglia, a singer and old friend who David has, in the past, described as his ideal woman. Unfortunately, he's also been very public about the fact that she does not feel like anything could happen between them. On the list of luxuries that David Williams happily spends his fortune on is fun holidays with his friends, most of whom are celebrating themselves. A perfect example of this is when he was photographed chilling out with his co-star Jennifer Aniston on a yacht while filming Netflix's Murder Mystery back in 2018. Another example is when David, along with Elizabeth Hurley, were invited to be guests on Sir Elton John's Riva Yacht. The two enjoyed Elton John and his partner in the south of France and took advantage of all the luxurious features the vessel had to offer. At some point, in fact, David even jumped off the side of the yacht with the GoPro in his hand. The vessel in question, Riva, is a motor yacht, a 76 perso model, and Elton John has had it for a few years. Before boarding the yacht, the two friends also visited Sir Elton John's luxury mansion in the south of France and celebrated a proper holiday in the country. It's not just luxury vacations and expensive houses that David spends his fortune on. Despite his many scandals and controversies, the one thing the comedian always has going for himself was his charity work. Some of what he does is overt, but most of his philanthropic practice is not at the center of his brand. He swam for the English Channel in 2006 to raise more than £1 million for sport relief. In the same year, he was awarded the Pride of Britain Award for Most Influential Public Figure. He was also the patron of Cardiac Risk in the Young back in 2006. The legacy David has managed to create for himself is impressive, despite his trials and tribulations, and it'll be a treat to watch what he does next.